Fernando. Oh, what you cat caught your tongue? Oh yeah. Ha 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 ha! He thinks it's funny. <laughs> Come on, kids. Let's go. Come on. Meadow is just having a little rest <laughs> in her little pile. <laughs> Hi, Meadow. Oh, enjoying the sun. The force is not strong with this one. <laughs> hey, bud. Hey, Levi. Levi, out of the way. Out of the way. Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name's Mark and I am starting this vlog inside our new car and tractor port. Uh, something we've been building over the last few days. Tara is uh, busy working on her wood storage area on the other side of the cage. Uh, so it worked out well. We were uh, anticipating on putting this tractor, the lawn tractor, over on that side. Uh, but both tractors fit side by side uh, with the snow blower up on the front. So we'll, we will be switching that over uh, when the time comes, once we've got all of our uh, other work done and uh, snow is, uh, is in the forecast. Uh, so here's the other side here. This is 32 feet long. Tara's starting by placing uh, a pallet down here and she's gonna be moving over all of that wood over there and she's very excited. <laughs> I love wood. Wood allows me creativity. So to have everything dry, we do have classes in the uh, winter time. Uh, so uh, all of the wood for wood making, uh, rustic wood making classes and, and all kinds of different things is, are gonna go in here. I just here. like to collect wood. <laughs> yeah, she likes to collect wood. Yeah. So I'm... Uh, uh, this is six feet tall. It's for Tara. <laughs> it's for Tara. And Marlene. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, I have to, uh, I can't stand. I guess if I was standing up straight, it would be like this. But uh, it's Tara's space. <laughs> so we um, put this all together. We put the tarp on uh, yesterday and we secured all of the, uh, the sides uh, with metal brackets. Uh, so there wasn't too much wind yesterday. It was a good day to put it up uh, and it worked out really well. Uh, so what we've done is um, we've got these metal brackets here on the side. Uh, these same metal brackets are underneath as well. Uh, and then we've mounted, you can see under here, we've mounted the metal and we've got wood to fasten everything down, uh, laminating it. Uh, right across the whole thing. Uh, and then on the top, we've got a metal piece. This one isn't fastened by any means uh, because it's just tension uh, along uh, over in this area here. This is the old pond liner we used. We cut it into a one foot strip and went down underneath. Uh, and then we put another piece up on top. Recycle so that's gonna use. hold that down like that, yeah. And then, uh, of course, same thing as on the other side, uh, we did two brackets. This one just has a, a, a drip, uh, drip plate, drip flashing. Uh, then there's a corner piece underneath here. Um, this is all taped up, so it's not going to uh, uh, damage it. Now, this is the tarp that we had 
down, um, down at the barn where we had the hay. So we have moved all the hay. Uh, we'll show you that in a minute. Um, but this tarp was actually the perfect size. You can see here, we needed, I think it was 27 or 28 feet. Uh, and it is perfect right across. Uh, we've then secured the bottom with, um, with two by fours across the bottom as well. And there's just a little bit left over here on the end. Not a whole lot that's folded over. Uh, so that has worked well. Now, what we realized is I've patched, patched them up with tuck tape, but there's holes in this tarp. Um, now we're gonna have some silver tuck tape that we're gonna pick up and we're gonna put, uh, put up on the, ooh, that's bright, put up on the, uh, on the top section there so it matches. Um, but what had happened was we had the hay that was down at the barn and we pulled it back and we noticed we, uh, we had some moldy bales. So there was probably about 12 bales that we lost due to mold. We can't feed that to the animals um, because they will stick their nose in that and they'll breathe in those mold spores. Uh, so it's just not, uh, they can get respiratory uh, issues and uh, it's just not a good thing. So not worth the risk. So we've got those and we'll use those as compost and other things uh, like we do the straw that comes out in the spring. Uh, so we've got the animals here hanging out. Uh, we. Uh, tend to feed them back here once in a while. Uh, it's easy, it spreads out some seeds. You can see there's, you know, grass growing up in that area. Uh, and they clear through the brush really nice. So now that the ground, well, is covered with leaves once again, uh, but this will give it an opportunity for the grass to grow throughout here. So we'll have a nice, uh, nice grassed in area. Our ponies are just finishing up breakfast. Hey, Levi. You can see them all spaced out. Carl's actually in the, in the bush there. Uh, and we have Daisy. And everybody's just nicely spaced out. So everybody's getting along. Looks like uh, Meadow is just having a little rest <laughs> in her little pile. <laughs> Hi, Meadow. Oh, enjoying the sun. Yeah, enjoy it while it lasts. Oh, it has been warm the last few days. And Billy. Billy's starting to smell. It's getting that time of year when I think Billy knows what's happening. He's going to be going in and uh, seeing the girls probably in, uh, usually beginning of November. Hey, bud. Yes. Yeah, you're smelly. <laughs> uh, so the hay. Uh, so this is where the hay was over here. Uh, we had a nice big stack of it that we got in and uh, those bales there on the pallet, well, pallet and a half of bales are the ones that are, uh, are affected. So this is our hay barn, uh, the first building we actually built here on the farm. And we used it for storing all kinds of different things in here while we were, uh, while, well, while we were moving out here. Uh, and even a few years before, chainsaws and equipment. Uh, and now, <laughs> This is the fullest it's ever been. So we had to make sure we got everything out of that tarp uh, and get it into here. Uh, so we placed some of it here, some of it here in the mudroom off the main barn, as well as a bunch of it in here with minimal space to get through uh, for winter storage for the rabbits as well as for the ponies. So as the ponies are way down there, uh, this would probably be a good opportunity to get in here with our new tractor and to clean out the, uh, the horse shelter. Uh, so it's, this is really nice compost in here now. We'll pull this out. Uh, we've got to raise the, uh, the ground in this area slightly, uh, as well as we want to pull this shelter uh, towards us. Uh, so this is a, a 10 by 10 shelter. Uh, pretty simple to uh, construct. You get your um, well, 10 foot walls, two by four, uh, and then two by six, and we just put metal on the top of it. Uh, and then poly. So poly is the next step we're gonna be doing probably next weekend. Uh, we're gonna poly all of the buildings. Uh, this one we just left up. Uh, it works well just to keep everything um, clean and uh, dry. Uh, and one thing that I forgot to mention in the last video and some of you had asked is the tractor. 
So we were trying to figure out tractor names, and it was actually my brother, Kevin, uh, who lives in southern Ontario, uh, that I think hit the, uh, the name that we really liked. Um, so it goes back to uh, Tara and my courtship from years ago. I had a little nickname for her, and she liked, uh, she liked that so much she wants to name the tractor, uh, and it's Tigger. So Tigger from Ten Acre Woods, sorry, from the Hundred Acre Woods, he's not from the Ten Acre Woods, uh, Tigger from the Hundred Acre Woods. Um, I used to call her Tigger, just as a kind of a cute little name, um, and she likes Tigger the Digger. So that's what the new name of the Kubota tractor will be. So it's not going to be long now before we have to shut down our summer watering system and start thinking about winter. It's hard to do with this beautiful weather, but the forecast shows that it's going to be slowly going down. Usually if we have snow on Halloween, that snow will likely stay. So it'll likely be below zero, maybe come up slightly. Um, so what we do here is we use a, a, a water heater usually the sinking type with the screen on it. I am in talks with Gallagher. I've got a meeting next week with them. I'm thinking about um, one of their heating systems. So um, it might be something to look at, a nice change. Um, it stores it in the center and then it's got uh, troughs out uh, down lower. Um, so we'll see what happens there. The problem with the heaters that we use is they're actually only rated to, I think, minus 25 or minus 30 degrees Celsius. Well, here in Manitoba, we get down into minus 40s. And sometimes, you know, with wind chills up to, you know, minus 50s and even into the minus 60s on the rare occasion. Um, so they fail. And we usually lose two of them during a season. So uh, it's really nice, there's a, uh, a place in the city uh, called Princess Auto, and they have a warranty that if you're not completely 100% satisfied, they will take it back. Um, no questions, which is excellent. Um, so we buy them there, and we, we talked to them about it and said they're only rated down to this amount. He says, well, bring them back if they fail. So it's a little bit of a hassle doing that. We like to have some on hand. We really just want one that's gonna work properly. Um, so that'll be something interesting. So if you're having problems with your winter watering system, um, stay tuned. So we're just topping up the water here and uh, we've got our hose that runs down across and goes into a spigot that is on the end of the building here. All right, let's make it through this tight little crevice here. <laughs> Uh, we pack them in. Tara knows how to pack. Uh, so this is uh, into the uh, the rabbit area here. Uh, so the girls and oh, look at the boys. Oh, they were cuddling. Oh yeah, I went and disturbed them. A little uh, little bromance going on there. <laughs> Uh, so this is going to be the next area. We've had a dry run uh, putting the tarp up. What we're going to do is put poly up, 6 mil poly. Uh, and on the peaks, I believe we're going to use, we talked about using um, carpeting, but we may even use that um, pond liner again uh, on there and then out on the exterior corner. So this will all be sheltered uh, in to the, uh, the dry, um, sheltered from the elements during the winter and rain. Uh, and we probably won't need to cover this area off that we usually do. Um, so we'll play it by ear next weekend. We, we tend to play everything by ear. Um, we don't really plan things out. Uh, we talk about things uh, and then come to, uh, come to an agreement on how things should be done. We work very well together. Hey guys. Uh, yeah, we had some roosters come in. Uh, we had a guy said he had some chickens. Um, so it's Polish. You can see the uh, the afro there going on. Uh, he said, oh yeah, we got some, some chickens. Well, they're roosters. <laughs> they all seem to be hanging together. Uh, they are doing well. <laughs> uh, just getting to know the lay of the land. Uh, usually these guys during the winter months, they do stay outside uh, and they roost in the shelter. Now, 
This shelter here is the one we will be covering with poly uh, right up across here and then right from here around. So this is the only opening. Uh, now we can bring the tractor in here in the spring uh, and clean out this area. This would then come down. Uh, and we want to figure out a way that this can also come off and detach so we can clean out this area with the Kubota as well. So making sure that, um, you know, the workload that we're doing, we're revolving it around the tractor and how that can work, uh, which is something we haven't done in the past. Uh, so watering system. So this is current uh, summer watering system. It's basically uh, a dish with a float valve. You can pick them up at most farmyard supply stores. Uh, and of course there's one in there with the uh, chickens and guinea fowl, uh, as well as another one over in the far one. Uh, so the, uh, the temperature in here is above zero during the winter. We have this nice little, uh, the doctor is in. Uh, so you just have to pay him with feed and hay, and uh, he'll listen to you anytime. Uh, that's Levi for sure. You can just hang out with him. Um, but we keep it above zero degrees. And I've shown this in the past. Uh, so we cool it. We don't heat it. The, uh, the body heat from the animals, um, that heats the building. Uh, there is a thermostat on the wall there, just a mercury thermostat that is hooked up to that exhaust fan. So we set it to about... Well, we set it to air conditioning. It has to have an air conditioning switch. Uh, and then it's set to uh, about two degrees, one degree Celsius, just above freezing, comes on and off as it needs to. Uh, so these are the doors here that we shut down. Uh, now our watering system uh, is the uh, pipe that actually runs out. You can see it runs along the wall here. So that is the spigot that I showed you just out uh, in that corner. It goes right out through there. Um, oh yeah, and uh, I forgot about uh, our showgirl <laughs> from last video. There's the showgirl. <laughs> um, so yeah, so there's the spigot there. We shut that line off. Um, now we have talked about running a heat trace off of that, which we may still do, uh, and that runs up into this area here. Now, <clears throat> the water pipe here that goes down and goes in, you can actually see that red wire that is wrapped around it. Um, so that's the old heat trace. Uh, the heat trace had failed, so this is the new heat trace, and it goes into the end. It's got a sealed gasket on here and goes right through about 20 feet down the line inside the pipe. But it was too hot. Um, it's not regulated. So what I did is I took this timer here and I have it set to come on for 15 minutes and then off for half an hour, on for 15, off for half an hour. So that maintains the water so it's just slightly warm. Uh, and that's how that watering system works. So Glenn's doing well. Um, I had uh, mentioned in the past that he has what's called pin wing or angel wing. Uh, so he won't be flying south this year, uh, but once his feathers molt next year and regrow, we're hoping that that uh, works well for him. Uh, so he's got uh, his girlfriend, Boo. But what's interesting is, this one here is a male. They have started hanging out together. And so we've got the other ones up there on the hill. Um, Boo has started to hang out with him. So, <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, so everybody's hanging out by the pond. Uh, and I see over there, we have the pigs. Hi, Petey. Petey gets grumpy in his old age. Hey, bud. <laughs> I don't know why they like it over here. It's, uh, I guess it's just loose dirt that's in here. Uh, and then Piper is <laughs> over here. <laughs> just tucked in. So we don't want to disturb them. Let them lie in the sun, bask in the sun, because they're going to be hibernating for the rest of the year underneath hay. Hi, girl. You watching your babies? Yeah, so the, uh, the ducklings that she hatched out. Yes, you hatched out. We're gonna have to watch you uh, girls next year. They tend to disappear, lay eggs, and then they show up with all these little ducklings. 
And so, and they've been hanging out on the pond quite a bit. Uh, so the, uh, the other ones, the geese and the ducks, they lay, you know, out in this area here and the crows come in and eat them, which is fine. It controls our population that way. Uh, but the Muscovies, they go out around and they go like underneath the front deck um, and they're really good at hiding. Uh, something else that is in the pond, see if we can see it, is uh, goldfish. So we've got a bunch of goldfish that's in here. I actually saw it, and if you go back to the aerial uh, footage, um, it was actually right in this area here as I did a flyby through here. And I looked and I thought, oh, that's, a, that's an orange patch. So I'm wondering if those are the goldfish. There they are there. They know when I'm coming around because they tend to swim away. It's like danger, danger. Oop, right in the sun. <laughs> there we go. So there are the goldfish. Yeah, they're swimming back over there now. <laughs> Just where I came from. <laughs> George, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> George has gotten big. He was just a little lamb. <laughs> now he's gotten, and there's Tinkerbell. <laughs> no, Turbo, no. <laughs> they want to get into all these gates. Grass is always greener on the other side. Um, we have been putting them in to mow the dog run. So we've been doing that in the evenings, but I think they've just gotten spoiled. <laughs> Fernando, <laughs> hi bud. What are you doing? <laughs> and Sheldon? <laughs> yes, and uh, we have J JJ's the far one and Willow's the uh, the close one. Uh, you know, the, the size difference, there's gonna have to be another way I'm gonna have to identify them because they're gonna get to a point where I'm not gonna know the difference. I know Willow's smaller than JJ, but who knows? Uh, Willow could have a little bit of a growth spurt. Right, Fernando? Oh, you got nothing to say now. <laughs> Fernando! Oh, what, you, cat caught your tongue? Oh, yeah. Ah, ha, 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 he thinks it's funny. <laughs> or she, I guess. Sheldon, what are you doing, bud? What are you doing? <laughs> You're goofy. Oh, just some of the stuff he does. Uh, people have asked why we keep him in this front area and why he's not back there. Just because he is a little special, we don't want him to wander into the pond and or wander off in the bush. Uh, well, Scooby, Scooby's out here, so hi, bud. <laughs> so these guys, um, Henry's over there. We've got a couple other ones that are in here. Uh, these guys will go into the barn once it gets cold, uh, but they hang out in this area here. Scooby is, um, he's a little aggressive, we'll say, to other, uh, other birds that he doesn't like. He's fine with the ones that are in here. Um, plus, we've been having issues, as I mentioned, with crows they also take out some of the smaller birds. Um, so the larger roosters tend not to be a problem. The crows go for the smaller ones. Okay guys, I just came through the gate from the dog run. And look at this. <laughs> Turbo is the one, he'll, he'll probably scratch at the gate. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> and everybody comes running. No, you guys have to wait a little bit. Usually we wait until the uh, the shade comes over onto the grass a little bit more. Uh, just because there's not a lot of shade in that area. <laughs> what are you guys doing, Jasper? <laughs> All right, come on guys, let's go in the back. Yeah, let's go in the back. <laughs> uh, so as you saw from that drone footage that I did at the beginning of the video, it is, uh, it's really nice looking back here. You know, you've got the colors, above uh, you got the light kind of shining through although it was overcast uh, when I did the drone footage because I didn't want those harsh lights um, but just having these shadows and everything uh, so the animals in the back pen area here uh, well we have 10 acres total probably seven acres back here uh, and this was all heavily treed uh, so the kudos to the animals for doing the uh, the nice clearing job for us uh, the garden is now shut down. Uh, Tara was going to do some more, um, you know, prepping for next year. 
Uh, but what she found was, she found some little baby snakes, uh, some garter snakes. So they couldn't have been much more than, I don't know, about three inches, two, three inches long. Uh, so she decided to stop because uh, when, they have, uh, when they have snakes, they usually have a bunch of them. So she doesn't want to disturb them for their winter, uh, their winter slumber. Uh, so she's just going to leave this for now and then uh, pick it back up in the springtime. Uh, and uh, that includes laying down the fabric like she's done all in here. Uh, and then putting the, uh, the bins in the center aisle and reconfiguring everything here. Um, one of the nice things somebody had actually mentioned the other day is uh, we've got tons of raspberries still on, on, our, uh, on our bush. So uh, lots of raspberries. Tiana's been coming out here and doing a bunch of picking. And uh, I think I uh, will take one myself. Atlas, hi buddy. So this is our uh, <laughs> our Bernese Mountain Dog. He's more of a goof than anything. Uh, he is scared of a lot of the animals, which is a reason why they need to grow up with them. You can't just take uh, and put them out. You know, they do have those instincts, but uh, the force is not strong with this one. <laughs> hey bud. Uh, and then Toby and Maggie. Toby. Toby. Toby and Maggie are West Highland Terriers. Here's Toby here. And his girlfriend, Maggie, uh, is probably inside the house. So she's resting. She has the equivalent of uh, what's called an ACL tear. Um, who knows how it happened, uh, but she is basically on bed rest inside. She's doing much better. Toby, they like to yell at each other. Do your dogs yell at each other? Do you have two male dogs and they just decide it's best to yell at each other? Um, so she's on bed rest, uh, six to eight weeks, I believe it is. She's starting to put weight on her foot. Um, so you can tell it's getting better. But of course we wanna make sure she gets her bed rest. Well, we got a lot done today. Uh, Tara worked on her uh, little project in the new carport. Uh, and then of course I cleaned out the horse, uh, the horse shelter. And now we're going to get the animals to uh, mow. Something they were waiting for last time um, I was filming. Come on kids! Come on kids! Let's go! Come on! 
Turbo's the first one to the gate. All right, single file. Yep, one at a time. Yep, good job. All right, yep. Keep going. And good job, is that everybody? Oh, no, Jasper. Oh, and the geese are coming too. Come on, geese! Oh, and Java! There we go. Good job. Yep, you too. Are you going in to get some grass? There we go. Can't forget about the geese. And then there's <laughs> these two. <laughs> Boo and Glenn. They don't know their routine that well. So, all right, so there we go. Everybody's in, mowing, and we'll leave them in here for uh, about an hour or so, uh, and then um, put them back in their pen. So that is it for yet another video of this uh, fine fall evening. Uh, we can only hope that the snow and cold weather will hold off, but we need to get prepared. So next weekend we will be doing the, uh, likely be doing the close off of the buildings, putting up the poly and getting that all ready for the cold weather. So until then, take care and uh, have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.